question seven. Which of the following processes increases the yield of petrol? Addition of relevant additives in the, does not increase the yield of petrol. It only increases the quality of petrol, right? Then cracking. Cracking is the process of breaking down large molecular mass or high molecular mass long chain alkanes into low molecular mass, shorter chain and more useful uh, alkanes, right? Uh, the main purpose of cracking is to improve or increase the yield of petrol because the amount of petrol or the quantity of petrol produced through fractional distillation is not enough to meet the demand for petrol in the nation, right? So what happens? The longer chain and less useful uh, hydrocarbons are always converted to more useful and shorter chain hydrocarbons like petrol through the process of what? Cracking, especially through catalytic cracking. So that's why B here is the answer. Distillation. Distillation, especially fractional distillation, is, is used to convert crude oil into what? Into the various rust fractions, right? And of which petrol is one of them. So it's not used to increase the yield of petrol. Increasing the octane number is a means of increasing the quality of the petrol. It does not necessarily increase the yield of petrol. Okay. Now, when a compound is heated with concentrated tetrodes of a six, it produces an alkene. The compound is that compound is an alkanol because when an alkanol reacts with concentrated tetrodes of a six at high temperatures, right? The reaction is what is a dehydration reaction. Example. C2H5, that's ethanol, reacting with concentrated H2SO4 at about, uh, let's see, 170 degrees Celsius. This will give us what? C2H4 plus H2O. So this is what, this is a dehydration reaction. A dehydration reaction. So this gives us an alkene, which is, in this case, is what? Ethene, ethanol, undergoes dehydration to give us what? Ethene in the presence of concentrated H2SO4 and high temperatures. Now, this reaction can also occur in a different way, but these two reagents, the alkanol and the concentrated tetrodes of a 6 acid, can also react in a different way, right? To give us an alkoxy alkane, right? An alkoxy alkane and water. Yet it's still a dehydration reaction, but in that case, the alcohol will be what? In excess, something like this. Concentrated H2SO4. at about 80 degrees at a lower temperature would give you what? C2H5 or C2H5 plus water, plus water. This is also a dehydration reaction. So alcohols undergo dehydration reactions with concentrated tetrodos of a six acid in two different ways, right? This is a fuel, this is a toxic, Ethane, that's the name of this compound. Ethoxy ethane, which is an ether. So like I said, this is what? Ethene. That's an alkene. Yeah, this guy is an alkene. This is an alcohol. This is also, these are, of course, the same thing. But here, the acid here is in excess, whereas here, the alcohol is in excess. So that's the difference between these two reactions. So take note of that. All right, so we move. The compound that has hydrogen bonding between its molecules is what? Hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular force not in a very strong word, a strong intermolecular force of attraction that exists in molecules in which hydrogen is um, covalently bonded to either of what nitrogen, oxygen, or what? Fluorine. So if hydrogen is not bonded to any of these atoms in a molecule, right, there's no way 
that molecule can exhibit what hydrogen bonding so in this case what do you think is the answer of course it is hydrogen what fluoride that is why you have hydrogen fluoride sorry you have hydrogen bonding in ammonia you have hydrogen bonding in water you have hydrogen bonding of course hydrogen fluoride you have hydrogen bonding in alcohols like ethanol you have hydrogen bonding in uh, it means that's a CH3 and H2, you know, the organic compounds, right? You have hydrogen bonding what acids, carboxylic acid, CH3, COO, what it because hydrogen is covalently bonded to what oxygen here, yeah. right? Here, yeah. hydrogen is covalently bonded to what nitrogen. So, the answer to that question is what hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen bromide, hydrogen iodide do not exhibit hydrogen bonding. Rather, they only exhibit permanent dipole, permanent dipole. Is that okay? Question 10 says, identify the hydrocarbon in the following equation. Okay, hydrocarbon. What's the hydrocarbon? A compound is made up of carbon and hydrogen atoms only. So, this should be a balanced equation, right? So, how many carbon atoms do we have here on the right-hand side? Four. How many hydrogen atoms? 12. This 12, this 4. So, already we have 2 here. So, which means that 2x will be equal to what? 4, is it not? And 2y will be equal to 12, right? So, what will x be? x here would be what? 2. And y will be what? 6. So, what will be the formula of our compound? Our CX, H6, HY, sorry, be equal to what? C2. H6, which is what? Ethane. All right. Question 11 says, the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms in one molecule of an acid is what? Basicity. This is basicity. And we have different types of basicity. We have monobasicity, monobasicity, right? Or acids that have basicity of one there. This way you have your hydrochloric acid. You have your uh, trazonitrophic acid, and you have your ethanoic acid, or most um, uh, carboxylic acids or canoic acids, right? Then you have dibasic acids or dibasicity, or a basicity of what? Two. This is where you have uh, tetrahydrosulfate six acid, H2SO4. You have um, trazodone carbon in four acid, H2CO3. You have a trioxo sulfate four acid. Yes, trioxo sulfate four acid, H2SO3, etc. And then you also have what? Tribasicity. Tribasic acids. That's how it is of what? Three. That's where you have your H3PO4. That's a uh, the travel phosphate five acid here how is this a basic uh, what do you call it a monobasic acid that's h plus and was cl minus so only one hydrogen ions what replace right even the ch3 cooh will give you a ch3 coo minus plus what h plus so that is the only high, this is the only hydrogen atom that is what replace that's replaceable. Okay, so these other ones here, the two hydrogen atoms will be replaced or are replaceable. While here the three hydrogen atoms are what replaceable. All right. Okay, let's move because of our time. So to consider the reaction equation, fluorine plus potassium bromide, you know, potassium chloride and bromine chlorine is this is a displacement reaction which is a property of uh, halogens right and halogens acts as what so they are good oxidizing agents the halogen molecules how can you confirm that chlorine is the oxidizing agent here fine let's look at the oxidation states then the oxidation state chlorine here is zero chlorine here is minus one Bromine here is minus one. Bromine here is zero. I'm not bothered about potassium because the oxidation state of potassium does not change. Plus one, plus one. 
So potassium to me is expected to, if I can write this in ionic form as well, Cl2 plus 2Br minus, plus this K plus Br minus, this K plus Cl minus, giving me what? 2Cl minus plus Br2. So this guy changes from zero. This guy changes from zero to minus one. What is that? Is that a decrease or an increase? That's a decrease, right? And a decrease is what? That's reduction. Decrease in oxidation number is what? Reduction. Well, this one changes from minus one to zero. Minus one to zero. What is that? Is that an increase or a decrease as an increase and an increase in oxidation number is what oxidation so which because she undergoes reduction in a redox reaction of course is oxidizing agent why the reducing agent undergoes oxidation so that's why chlorine is what is the oxidizing agent so question 13 the conditions needed for the following reactions to occur this is an esterification reaction. That's a reaction between a, carbo, uh, a carboxylic acid or an alkanoic acid and an alkanol, right, to form an ester and what water in the presence of what concentrated H2SO4 and what heat. It's a reversible reaction. Yes, this is, I said what, this is what, esterification. Why the forward reaction is called what condensation? It's a condensation reaction because water is what removed, is eliminated, right? The backward reaction is what is hydrolysis. Okay, so we move. Question fourteen. Question 14 says, the substance which is most soluble at the lowest temperature is what? The answer to this question is sodium chloride. Because of all the salt, it is sodium chloride that has the highest uh, solubility of about 30, about 36.5 grams in 100 grams of what? water. And the solubility of sodium chloride is almost independent of temperature. It shows a very little change in solubility, then a, a wide range of what temperature. So it changes, it moves from between 36.5 to about 39, to about 39 degrees or 39 to 40 degrees Celsius, between zero degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius, right? So this is the solubility of sodium hydroxide at zero degrees Celsius. Yes, and if you compare it with the solubility of this other salt, you find out that this is the highest at zero degrees Celsius. So the answer is what? Sodium chloride. Now consider the following, question 15 says, consider the following cell notations. Magnesium ion plus two electrons give us magnesium metal. That's a reduction reaction. Okay, two reduction have equations, right? So determine the voltage of the cell. So the problem, the question now is which of these two guys will be the anode and which one will be the cathode? Fine, very easy. The anode is always the more reactive what? Metal. You have zinc, you have magnesium. Which one is more reactive? Of course, magnesium is more reactive. And since magnesium is more reactive, it means that magnesium will serve as the what? Anode, right? Well, zinc will serve as the what? Cathode. So this will be the anode. Well, this will be the word cathode, right? So what occurs at the anode? Oxidation occurs at the anode, is it not? Oxidation occurs at the anode. While reduction occurs at the cathode. And how can you know that this is the anode or magnesium is the more reactive metal? The more reactive metal or the more like a positive element always have the what? A more negative electrode potential. Now to calculate the EMF of the cell or the voltage of the cell, we use the formula E cathode minus what E anode or E oxidation, E reduction 
E reduction minus E oxidation. That is, if you are making use of the reduction half equation or reduction potentials, right? If you want to use the reduction potentials to calculate it, normally they will always give you the reduction word potentials. So you just substitute after identifying your cathode and your anode. So this will be what? Minus 0 0.76 minus minus 0 0.76 minus minus 2.37, right? That gives us what? 0 point, minus 0 0.76 plus 2.37. And if we evaluate this, this should give us about um, 1.61 volts. That's plus 1.61 volts. What's the significance of this value? For the fact that the little potential of the cell is positive, it means that the arrangement of the cell with magnesium being the anode and zinc being the cathode is what correct. It means the electrons will correctly flow from the magnesium anode to the zinc cathode, right? And if it gives us a negative value, it means the cell will not work. The metal or the element you are using as the anode and the one used as the cathode are wrongly what placed. So it means they have to be what interchange, right? Which of the following factors does not affect an equilibrium reaction? Of these four factors, the only factor that does not affect an equilibrium reaction, not necessarily does not affect an equilibrium reaction, but does not affect the equilibrium position of an equilibrium reaction is the catalyst. Because actually, catalyst increases the rate of the forward and backward reactions of an equilibrium reaction equally, right? So which means that it helps the reaction to attain equilibrium faster. So if you cannot completely see it does not affect an equilibrium reaction. It does affect an equilibrium reaction, but it does not affect the equilibrium position of the reaction. So it has no effect on the yield of the product that will be what formed. 17. If the atomic number of an element J is 11, and that of nitrogen is 7. The most likely formula of the nitrite of J is what? Now, J is 11. J is 11. So, which means that J is what? 2, 8, 1. Which means that J is in group 1 of the periodic table, right? So, if J loses one electron, J will lose that one electron to become what? J plus. Right? And nitrogen, of course, Nitrogen is 7, that's 2, 5. Nitrogen is in group 5, so nitrogen will gain 3 electrons, right? So nitrogen will gain 3 electrons to become what? N3 minus. So when J plus and N3 minus combine, the valency of J here is 1. Why that of nitrogen is three, and they, when they exchange their valencies, this will become what? J three N, which is what option A.